So this is lesson four in our force and motion unit, and the topic for today is acceleration. Um, so I want you to take just a second to pause the video and answer these questions um, just to kind of see how much you already know about acceleration. Um, and it's okay if you don't know the answer. I just want you to start thinking about it and just sort of test yourself, see how much you actually do know. So whether you are able to answer the questions or not um, is fine because we're going to address all of these questions and by the end of the lesson you should be able to come back and answer them correctly. Um, I thought this graphic was um, funny and sort of dealt with acceleration so I kind of threw this in there. All right, so I'm going to travel back to lesson two where we talked about velocity and if you'll remember a velocity is speed with a direction. So if I am describing the velocity of this car, I might say the velocity is four meters per second north. So I've included how fast the car is and then its directionality as well. And velocity is going to play into acceleration um, and we'll see how today. So the big takeaway from this lesson is you should at the end of the lesson be able to describe how velocity relates to acceleration. So acceleration is just another way that we can describe an object's motion. And basically, it's how an object's velocity is changing. So by definition, acceleration is the change in velocity's rate. Um, so we could be talking about a speed and or a direction. For example, um, if a car speeds up, it is accelerating. If a car slows down, it is also accelerating. But we have a, a term that we use for that and it's called deceleration. Um, or an object could be changing direction. So if a car is headed north and then suddenly it whips around and starts going west or east or south, it changes direction, therefore it also accelerates. So Acceleration is a change in velocity's rate, and this can be a change in speed and or a change in direction. All right, so this question says, which car is accelerating? So I'll let us watch it again. All right, so if you answered all of the cars, you would be correct because all of them change their speed. Now they don't change their direction, but they all change their speed. So they all start off at zero um, and then they accelerate. And we don't know what their velocity is at any point in this picture, but we do know that it is greater than zero at some point. So we could calculate acceleration. Um, however, if we were to look at the motion on a position time graph um, or a distance time graph, we could see which object ex that both um, excuse me, that all three objects accelerate, but car A accelerates the greatest because it has the steepest slope. Um, car B has more of a constant acceleration. All right, so here's just a real life example of acceleration. Both of these cars can travel 60 miles an hour. Um, however, the sports car can get to 60 miles per hour a lot faster than the Beetle. And so if we're comparing accelerations of two objects, we might say one accelerates faster than the other. Now on a graph, um, positive acceleration is going to be portrayed as a positive slope. Um, and this shows us that speed is increasing. So this would be on a velocity time graph. If we see a positive slope, then we have a positive acceleration. Um, if we see a negative slope, that's okay. Um, that just means that our object is decelerating, which again is speed is decreasing. Now we can calculate acceleration just like we were able to calculate speed and velocity. Acceleration has a formula. This formula is rather intimidating when you first see it, but it's really simple. You'll see when we start the word problems. So acceleration is a change in velocity divided by time. 
Um, so in order to calculate the change in velocity, we're going to take the final velocity, which is the speed of the object at the end of our word problem, and we're going to subtract the initial velocity from that. So initial means at the start or at the beginning. So whatever the speed or velocity is at the beginning of our word problem is going to be what we plug in for initial velocity. So just to kind of break it down, put this formula in your notes. Acceleration is VF minus VI divided by T. And of course, A stands for acceleration. VF stands for final velocity. So once again, that's the speed at the end of our problem. And then we're going to subtract initial velocity from that. And then we're going to divide that answer by time. So let's just kind of jump into what these word problems look like. So here's an example. So suppose a car is stopped at a red light. So if you imagine that, we know in that first sentence that our initial velocity is zero because the car is stopped. So you can see here when I've worked it out, I have put in zero meters per second as my initial or starting velocity. Now, when the light turns green, it tells us that the car accelerates to a speed of 150 meters per second. So that's the last calculated um, speed that I have, and they've presented that in the word problem. So that's going to be my final velocity. And then it tells us that it takes the car 10 seconds to reach the speed. So the final velocity is 150. The initial velocity was zero. And then we're going to divide that by 10 seconds. And I'm not sure why I put 10 here. It's just a typo. You only have to put 10 once. Um, you'll want to subtract before you divide. So 150 minus zero is 150. And then I guess that 10 should be here. Um, so 150 divided by 10 would be 15. So my numeric value is 15. And then my unit is going to be meters per second squared. So with acceleration, our base unit is meters per second squared. Basically, it's just the unit for speed squared. All right, one, once again, I've already mentioned this, but um, of course, I've got the unit for acceleration there and what it means for positive acceleration versus negative acceleration. Again, you can see this on the velocity time graph. So here, velocity is increasing. Um, so I have acceleration. And then from point C to point D, I have negative acceleration, which we call deceleration. Um, and then these points here, like point B to C and D to E and F to G, um, that is the velocity remaining constant. So no change in velocity means no acceleration. Of course, if this object were changing direction, that would be a different story, but we don't know that from this graph. All right, so if acceleration is small, you need to know that that means that speed increases gradually. So the object starts off um, going a certain velocity and then they might increase their speed gradually or consistently. If the acceleration has a greater value, then that means the object is speeding up much more rapidly. So an example, a human uh, runner's acceleration is about two meters per second squared. If I were going to compare that to a sports car um, with an acceleration of 7.2 meters per second squared, I could say the sports car is able to accelerate much faster than the human. So the greater the number, the more rapid the acceleration. All right, so what I want us to do here is I want us to sort of tie in all the motion terms that we've talked about so far and tie it into something that we all love, um, which is roller coasters. So we've talked about speed. We've talked about velocity. We've talked about acceleration. We've talked about motion in general. So what I want you to do on the back of your notes is I just want you to stop the video, do a quick Google search of roller coaster physics, and on your notes, I want you to just list out, just bullet points, list out 10 ways that roller coasters relate to some of the terms that we've talked about. Um, if you find that roller coasters relate to some physics terms that we have not yet gotten to, um, like momentum or inertia or gravity or air resistance, um, you might find that you can also add that. That could 
be one of your 10 facts. So pause the video now, take just a second to research roller coaster physics, put that list of 10 on your notes, and I will see you in the next lesson.